Hi, this is Nate Hirsch, and welcome to the Tim Sauer Show, as we visit with the head coach of the Georgia Southern Eagles. The Eagles with a very impressive win against a very fine Savannah State Tiger team this past weekend at Balson Stadium, 21-7, in some tough weather conditions for both teams, but overall a very impressive effort for your ball club. Well, and I was pleased with our offensive production in the first half, and I, I was very pleased the way we played defense and keeping them out of the end zone for the most part throughout the day. We, unfortunately, we did give up one big play, uh, but those things are going to happen when you play against uh, offenses with great skill players. And so I was very pleased with our efforts. Savannah State had a super football team, and my hat's off to Coach Bill Davis uh, for fantasy football program. And my hat's off to our football team for being ready to play and taking it to them on the defensive side of the ball and holding them out of the end zone when they had to, and the offense taking it to them in the first half and putting the ball in the end zone when they needed to. All right, we have a lot of things to show you. First half highlights are coming up next after this timeout. Come the Savannah State Tigers at Paulson Stadium, and unfortunately, the weatherman did not cooperate. Otherwise, we might have had the place really overflowing with people, a crowd of better than 16,000 plus was on hand and braved some tough weather conditions to see the Eagles take on the Savannah State Tigers. Let's go right now if we can, though. We have a lot of highlights to take a look at. The first half highlights where the Georgia Southern Eagles deferred on the coin toss, winning the coin toss. Let's take a look now at some of the action from this past weekend's ball game as the Eagles and Tigers battled at Paulson. You kick off to start the game. We kick off. Reed, Reed Hayes got some good hang time on this kick, and we had good coverage here on tackling inside the Inside the 10 yard, I see Chris Joyner and Danny Brett down there. I think that's also, uh, I think that was Craig Richardson down there, folks, making some good tackles. Right there, we kind of lost contain, and with that, Leverett get outside and get about 15 or 20 yards. He's the running quarterback. And they're in the punt. That was a tough one to feel right there, Nate. It certainly was. Then a little option play, pitching it to, uh, to Paris from uh, Brunswick, Georgia, and he does a super job of catching the pitch and getting outside. I believe we had a holding call that nullified that play. Here's another one, the option play, pitching the ball to uh, Shaft and Trey. We can get about five or six yards on that play. And Charles Bossett drops back fast and throws a beautiful ball out here to Darren Willis to convert. I believe that was the third down conversion right there. Pretty good protection. They were all size on that play. Then we put this play in just for uh, their particular defense they were running, and it worked uh, the first time. Good trap blocking. Good job of coming off the ball of the offensive line. Miguel, Rusty, uh, Frank and Stevens, Rex Nottage, and Joey Cushing. On the inside of here, I thought Charles was going to break this one right here. He was about one step from going all the way. Both quarterbacks did a super job yesterday of reading the inside of here. Here's another good read by Charles. James is playing hard. The offensive line is coming off the ball inside the five yard line. This is almost perfect execution of this play. This is the same play that Charles scored on twice against Palmer. And this time the, end, the corner takes the quarterback and he pitches the ball to Chad Holmes and he scores his first Georgia Southern touchdown. Yes, they had a good day yesterday. Glad to see him in the action. We well, really did. Chad is going to get better and better each and every time he goes out and plays. There's Alexander. You know, he can scramble and run with the football well. The defense bend but didn't break yesterday. Uh, Lucius Cole, super running back, had a couple missed tackles. That's a good tackle by Brandon Rose right there. And we have a fumble. I think that's Don Hudson recovering the fumble. The offense got the ball in good field position. I believe we took advantage of it right here. Sure do. Charles is back fast again, throws it to Terrence Terrell for another, I think, I think that was another third down conversion right there. Had good protection for the most part during the game. There's another throw to uh, Shafton Fraley. Moving the ball, mixing in the run of the pass, then we run the trap again. James knocks it down inside the one yard, down about the one yard line. Then we hand the ball off to James, he gets it in. Good blocking by the offensive line, and there's a turnover right there caused by the defense, and we take advantage of it to go up 14 to nothing. Back. Well, they do come back. Here's a big play right here. We, we went for the breakup on the ball instead of, instead of being a little bit conservative there. But that's all right. When you're aggressive, those things are going to happen. There goes Cedric Smith. Uh, he uh, goes 80-something yards for the touchdown. And we knew they had big play capabilities. They were scoring 30 points a game. 
know, they have some great football players on their football team. Calls us back to pass here, and we get a ground and get a ground and call, trying to get rid of the football. I'll have to take credit for this play, Nate. I think I called this one. This not really was not a very good play. Okay. <laughs> punting out of our own end zone. It was tough punting yesterday against the wind. Doug Grant does a super job of uh, catching the football and gets some extra yards, and they're in super field position. Right? And the wind was a big factor in the football game. Big play coming up. I think it's a close They throw the football there down to inside the 10 yard line. Yeah, and they, for then they got a penalty for holding, I believe. Good coverage right there by Sean Austin. A junior cornerback from Thomasville, Georgia. Then we run into the kicker again. We had him stopped and they run into the kicker. I believe they might have called Ruffin the kicker. They called Ruffin, gave him a first down. They gave him another first down. We've just got to do a better job on special teams and not creating these these penalties that puts the offense in bad field position and puts the defense back in a bad situation again. Here's, Here's Virgil Harrington. He was kind of a spy. He was, he was spying that time for draws and screens, and he comes up with a big play. It's good to see Virgil from Statesboro, Georgia. Played at Statesboro High School doing, doing a super job and playing good football at Georgia Southern. Here's uh, we put Joe in. He throws and completes that pass, and he's a perfect edge. Keeps an option. Good blocking on the corner. Pits the ball to Chris Wright. Went inside the five-yard line here, and Joe runs the same play that, that Charles just scored on early and kicks the ball to Chad, and this time it's open for the quarterback to run the football. Pretty good blocking up front. Good blocking by uh, Tyrone Stevens and also uh, James Williams, who's the setback on that play. And so the Eagles took the lead into the locker room 21-7. to Now, we didn't know at the time that would be all the scoring in the football game. Our halftime feature is coming up next, so don't go away. More coming up in just a moment. University to national fame in football. Fortune for the work he did putting together our halftime feature on the uh, Sea Turtles there. We'll have more and different things coming up throughout our program throughout the year focusing on some of the academic side of things going on at Georgia Southern University. But you've got a lead at the half, 21 to 7. How'd you feel in the locker room? I felt good at halftime, they going in the locker room. I felt like our offense would come out in the third quarter and punch one more in and I would feel a little bit more comfortable. I, I would have never guessed that the score would end up 21-7 with that much offensive punch on their side on, on their side of the field from Savannah State. But our defense did a super job of keeping them out of the end zone. Got to give Coach Spanger and his crowd credit, and uh, we got good leadership over there developing. And we don't have a lot of seniors, but those seniors that are playing are playing outstanding football for us. And we're going to continue to get better on defense. And we're going to continue to get better on offense each and every week, and that's all you can ask for as a football coach. You bet. All right, let's take a look then, if we can, at the second half highlights. Georgia Southern and Savannah State. Again, the rain now starts to become a little more of a factor as we take a look at things in the second half of the football game. The Eagles get the football to start things in the second half. Well, it seemed like in the second half on offense, we were always our own worst enemy. We would stop ourselves. We'd have a fumble snap from center. Or we'd start off first and 25. That's some good pressure right here. I think that's uh, Virgil Herring and Alex Mass hitting him from the backside. Hit the ball up in the air. Not a lot of pressure right here. I think that's uh, I think that's uh, Sean Austin coming up and making a good hit. Good job coming off the ball, offensive line. James Williams has done a good job. There's Darren Willis downfield trying to make a downfield block. There's Miguel Lube and Rex Knott is also downfield looking to make downfield blocks. And we stall again and have to punt. With the wind the way it was and the weather condition, it was difficult to uh, punt in the football and the field position play to you play in the game. Here's a good play by Don Hudson. Good pursuit. Look how many blue jerseys are around the football right there. That's a really, really good sign. Here's a... That was a short yardage play. We, they got short it. yard Virgil yeah. Harrington, Mash, Paul Carroll doing a super job on that play. They're running the option. Nick Davis coming from the backside linebacker to make that play. And they're in the punt. You know, I felt like every possession they didn't score. The game just kept moving along. Tried to run the reverse right here, and it really wasn't open. We needed to really work on punt returns. We got a few yards, and we got another clip, and that's going back to offense up again. But we really need to go back to work on our punt block and punt return a lot more. Good read by Charles, giving the ball to uh, James Williams. And the offensive line's coming off the football. They're executing Georgia Southern's bread and butter football play right here. That's what I was pleased about. Charles is scrambling out. 
throw the deep to uh, Terrence Sorrell. I thought Terrence was going to come down with that one, make a big play, but he just couldn't quite hang on to it. Charles did a great job just scrambling to stay alive on that play. He really did. Charles was back to pass again. We got a little pressure, didn't hold him out quite as well as we had been in the past, and they picked him up on the sidelines. And we have to punt, but we gain, regained field position here a little bit. And we got him backed up just a tad. And here's, here's some good coverage here. Rob Stockton, I believe, the first mate. Yeah, see Chris Arnold there, Michael Morris, uh, Henry Parrish. And we let Lucius Cole get outside there, cracking our strong, cracking our strong safety. And they do a super job of executing on that play. They pitch it again to Lucius Cole. He gets outside, gets three or four yards. They've really got some good football players on their football team. They do, they're well coached. Here's Alex Mash making a good play. He does that to us all the time. It's good to see him do something. <laughs> somebody, else, somebody else take the dive in the quarterback. So does Ronald. There's Dr. Henry. He's really getting into the football game. Uh, yes, indeed. He leads the cheers. Yeah. That was the fourth quarter now. Sean Austin had good coverage here. Trying to throw it deep to Cedric Smith. Charles is back to throw. Getting a little bit of pressure. They are good. They're always outstanding pass rushers. Charles scrambles out. Tries to, I believe it's Darren Willis on the sideline, a little bit overthrown, a little bit of a scramble, and we have to punt again. They're going to get good operating room here. They sure are. They're going to get a good operating room. we got to give them two yards to be able to feel the kick when they have a fair catch and we can't make contact with the person that's catching the return man. They're starting trying to run the ball outside. Good, pretty good game tackling. There's three or four blue jerseys right there around the football. I see Vincent Norris in there making a tackle. I think they had a little bit of pressure by Henry Ferris from the outside right here. They missed the field goal. We kind of dodged the bullet right there. Goes back in the football game. He throws a strike to uh, Shaft and Prevy. I thought our passing game really picked up and improved. We're pitching the ball to Chris Wright. A little bit pitched, a little bit behind him. We didn't get a, as much out of that play as I thought we might. Then we're running the inside beer, and Joe does his, Joe does a pretty good job of reading and getting down and getting five or six yards. And they have the football back. Alexander's back to pass. Ronald Johnson puts pressure on him, but he throws a strike downfield. Now they have the deep play potential. They're moving it down again. Yeah, we're still putting some pressure on him, but he still throws another strike. Now I think they had first and goal right here on the five, or second and goal on the five. Good play right there by Don Hudson and Sean Austin breaking up that pass. Another good play, I think that's Paul Carroll and Rob Stockton right there on that breakup. And they throw it one more time. We have good coverage over here in the corner by Brandon Roselle. And they, we keep them out of the end zone right there. And you know, that's super. If they can't score, can't beat them. All right, and let's uh, visit now with some of the players after the Eagles' victory. Well, was, I think it was like um, second and ten or second and nine, something like that. And um, they caught Coach Sun, Sun in a, um, a, a G spy, a G field spy. Now my jam was surge the line, was surge the line real hard and bike pedal out and mirroring the quarterback. And um, Alex Mass, he got a good hard pass rush in the inside. And he got to the quarterback, barely crawling on his knees, but he got to him. And um, somebody took the ball in the inside, and the ball was floating around, and I. So happy, saw it in the air, and I just ran over and, you know, scooped it up before it hit the ground and tried to make something out of, you know, nothing. Overall, yeah, we're feeling pretty good. Um, we got some good drives going, and um, we showed the type of offense we really have. But um, second half, we came out kind of rusty, and it hurt us. Did it kind of bother you or have any phase to you at all that Dupree came in a little earlier in the game than what he normally does? No, not at all. I, I knew he was coming in, and I, um, I felt like he, he would do pretty well. So I was all okay. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to going back and talking to the guys and playing between the heads it's gonna be a very exciting game and hopefully we'll come out on top talking to the guys now is this a positive uh, statement or a negative one are you going to be after a uh, little sweet revenge here no i don't look at it as a revenge i just gonna go up there and have fun and basically win the game this athens georgia for a date with the georgia bulldogs in a sold out sanford stadium is where we'll be heading between the hedges in a game a lot of fans have been looking forward to. How about the coaching staff of the players? Our players are looking forward to going to Athens and playing in one of the great arenas in the South, between the hedges where 
some great football coaches have coached. Uh, Coach Dooley walked the sideline for 25 years, where Coach Goff, who has, who's really molded this football team and probably the best Georgia football team they've had in the last 10 years, uh, it'll be a super uh, opportunity for our players to go up and play between the hedges and, and play there in front of 85,000 people. Well, the Eagles, of course, have been looking forward to playing Division 1A schools, and they've taken on Florida State in the past, and so uh, you'll see a team probably certainly in that caliber. We'll have the highlights for you next week at the same time on the Tim Stowers Show.